Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. It's Yusuf here from Dental Reviews. I hope you're all doing well. So in today's video, I did promise that I would review something slightly different than dental loops. So we are reviewing something called Kuroku. Now you're probably thinking to yourself, what is Kuroku? Essentially, it's a web-based application which helps you with doing your dental notes and it uses AI. Now it's no secret that over the last few years, maybe over the last decade, AI is starting to infiltrate uh, within dentistry. So it's helping us now with our notes, it's helping us diagnose certain conditions. We see it with certain applications uh, with radiography. You can even get a whole CBCT report using AI now. But today's focus is looking how it can help us when it comes to note taking. Now it's no secret whether you're a dentist or any type of medical practitioner, note taking is very tedious and it's quite tiring. Uh, particularly when you're seeing a number of patients throughout the day. It gives you a bit of a brain fog sometimes when you're constantly having to do either written notes or even just typing away. Now templates over the years have helped with this, but I find that even with templates, I, I still end up writing quite a lot or typing quite a lot during my consultations, mainly in the discussion. And this does take quite a bit of time as I try to be as detailed as I can be with my notes. Obviously here in the UK, and I'm sure in other countries, litigation is quite a big thing. So it's really important and we're taught that you should do contemporaneous notes after you see the patient. So of course, when I heard about Kuroku from some of my friends, I was really interested in trying it out. Now I remember quite clearly back in dental school, uh, many years ago now, uh, when I was doing my dental notes, I really did think to myself, wow, I wish we could have something where you could just sort of click away or literally touch away on the types of procedures that you did. For example, you're doing a filling, you just click on, let's say the lower left five, the surface, the type of anesthetic that you use, materials, etc., etc. If you could just click it, it would be so much easier. And Kuroku is literally that. So in today's video, I'm gonna talk a little bit about Kuroku themselves, the uh, organization. I'll talk about the things I liked about it, the things I didn't like so much. I'll include some feedback from one of my nurses, Amy. She kindly gave some time out of her lunch to discuss her thoughts on Kuroku. I'll also do a small demo with an emergency appointment just so that you can see how it works and then I'll conclude. So let's talk a little bit about Kuroku themselves. So they are quite new as an organization or a business. They started back in 2017 from two individuals. Uh, one is called Hannah Burrows and the other is Jay Shah. And they had this vision of essentially making the note-taking process a lot easier and a lot more slick, which they have done. Uh, Kuroku is a Japanese word, which from what I understand means sort of note-taking or uh, taking minutes in a meeting, for example. So that explains where the name comes from, which I really like because I do like the Japanese culture. Okay, so let's talk about some of the pros of Kuroku. So one of the things that I like is that it's very, very quick and easy to set up. You just set up with your usual email and set up a password and they will ask you a few questions about your practice and things that you may commonly use to help you with your initial templates. Again, what I really like about it is it is a web-based application. So you don't have to install any software on your computer and which can be quite tricky. Let's say you're working in the hospitals, you can't necessarily download uh, certain programs. So you're not inhibited in that way. It's similar to Dentally, which is why I like Dentally. I know it splits or divides opinion, but personally I find that it's quite slick. So initially when I set it up and I showed it to my nurse, I thought that I would have a bit of a backlash because typically in dentistry, when you try to introduce some changes, it's not always well received but my nurse was really on it. And to be fair, within the first half an hour, 45 minutes, she was better than I was and she was very well acquainted uh, during that time period. So it's very quick and easy to learn. I've used it over several different types of practice. I've used it in practice and hospital with different nurses and each of the nurses have gone on with it straight away. And that sort of leads me on to the fact that the nurse can do a majority of the notes. You're not having to sit there at the end of your consultation and type everything away. Uh, it allows the nurse to do the majority of the things in quite a lot of detail as well. So they won't necessarily miss out on bits that you may have discussed. Again, I'll show you a little bit later with a demonstration what I mean by this. I also like the fact that it includes quite a lot of different talking points and it will, and it will relate back to this later in the discussion for example, if it picks up that a patient is a smoker and an alcoholic, it will remind you later to have that discussion with a patient, of course, with a link to oral cancer. So it's extremely important and helps you with your clinical practice. So I'm gonna include some feedback from my nurse, Amy, who has been using it with me over the last two months now. Here's what she had to say about Kuroku. Okay, so hi everyone, this is uh, my lovely nurse, Amy. Hi. So she has the pleasure or the displeasure of being my nurse um, since I've been at this practice for a while now. Um, I can say that because 
uh, I make her go through a lot of things. Just recently, what I do, I made you mix about five putties yeah, five for an putties. impression. Nice. So yeah, I can make her life a little bit difficult. Of course, today we're discussing Kuroku about a month and a half ago. Yeah. So we've been using it ever since. What were your initial thoughts when I told you about it and when I loaded it up on the screen? I thought, oh no, here we go. Another, another thing that's going to take a while um, in surgery. But no, it was, it, it was a bit optimistic. Yeah. Because obviously it's something that we've not seen before. And obviously in the in dental industry, it's very quick. So yeah. is it going to be efficient or is it just going to be as long as normal notes? Yeah, particularly how we work, right? We've got yeah. mixed practice. We're seeing patients all the time. Yeah. Yeah. And then what, so what did, how did you, when it was first loaded and you had to sort of learn the system, how did you find it? Quite quick and easy. It was a lot easier and quicker than I thought it was going to be because obviously you don't have to write anything, it's just what the patient's saying, you click, and then it makes it for you. So it was like really quick and easy to get the grasp of it, mm. and spent more time with the patient than we actually did doing the notes, so. Yeah, and I think our times in between patients had reduced, hadn't Yeah. It? I mean, we've been using it now for, again, like I said, a month and a half. Mm. How, what are the things that you like about it? <sighs> I like that it's really quick. I like that we can spend more time with the patient than making sure we've got everything. Um, I like that it's got the little details on the notes of where you can pick exactly where the fractures are, where the decays are. Um, if you make a note of the mobility or any perio issues, it literally makes everything that you could cover already there so you don't have to think about it or add it which I think is really efficient and an effective way because when we're working really fast and trying to do it, like all the notes, it is hard to try and remember everything. But this is so quick and easy that the important stuff, it's already there. So you don't need to add it, which yeah. I think is quite good. What are the things that you dislike or do you think that could be improved about it? So there's, I think there's mainly two things. One of them would be radiographs. So obviously it shows you the periapical and the bite wings and it gives you the notes on that. However, they don't give any for like OPGs. So, you know, we're having to put it in ourselves, which I know is probably not a massive major thing, but as in like the effectiveness of it, when we do PAs or bite wings, it's there done for us, but we're just having to put the OPGs in. And then I would probably say when you're looking for a template um, that they have on there, if you go to notes, which I keep doing, you go to notes, there's templates there. If you want to find a new one like a crown prep or crown fit and it's not on there, you have to go to the library and then you have to find it. But it's not called crown prep, it's called something different. So it makes it a bit more time consuming actually trying to find which ones you want and which ones are the right ones. But other than that, there are only mainly little tweaks that could be improved later on. But overall, there's nothing really major that I would say, no, I wouldn't use it again. Okay, so going back to us and our practice in the surgery, do you think it's had a positive effect or made us more efficient? I think it's been a massive positive aspect into our day-to-day -day, like working life aspects because you don't have to think about the nose, it's done, quick, move on, next patient. Whereas I think before, note taking took so much more time than actually seeing the patient. So, you know, you couldn't do a filling then and there if you needed to, because it's like, okay, we'll do it, but then we're gonna run late because we've got to do all these notes. Whereas you do it, it's done, before the patient's even been numbed up. Mm. Like it's so quick and efficient. And it makes us in surgery more quick and more, it's more effective to use it. So I'm like, never want to not use it again, but I know it's going to be a point yeah. where I'm going to I was just to... about to say my trial's expiring yeah. in a couple of weeks. So what, are your, what are your thoughts on that? It's sad because I really like it. I really like using it. And now, like, because I work with other de de dentists, it's easy, like, I can tell the difference. Yeah. The difference in having to write everything out all the time. And this where it's always different for every patient it's not the same but 
it's so quick that you don't even have to think about that. It does it all for you. I really like it and I'm really sad that it's going. No, I think everyone, all dentists should probably give it a go because I think it makes their life so much easier. And I think they'll be surprised of how quick and effective it is. Because when someone hears that and they're so used to doing notes, it's like, nah, I'm not going to. But do you think all nurses will find... Obviously, you're quite... Uh, I think you're pretty good with tech, yeah. right? But do you think all nurses will, will like using it? I think so. Like, obviously, we had Emily, the trainee, in here, and she picked that up really quickly. Like, I think it's just a really quick, easy way of doing your notes. The maximum details that you need for notes that obviously is required yeah in a formal way and it all out how yeah. it should be i agree because even we see some nhs patients that yeah. we do the comprehensive exam on those patients yeah on the template from mm. there which has a lot of information but we just whiz through it yeah and we get all the information we need mm. it's um, really it's good very accurate yeah well well let's let's hope i uh, renew my yeah i think you should trial then <laughs> i think you should no, thanks saying. thanks a lot Amy. You're i appreciate welcome. that you're okay, so now following on from what Amy said, I do like that you can use Kuroku for various different things. So you can use it for CBCT reporting, you can use it for implant planning assessment. Uh, there's a quite a well-known dentist called uh, Martin Wendadea who's a great implant surgeon. If you haven't seen his work, definitely check him out on Instagram. He is a wizard. He's got great work. He did one of my study days. He's amazing. But he's very kindly set up a template that you can use on Dentally which will help you sort of make sure that you don't miss anything, particularly when you're starting out with implants. The other thing which I've been using it quite a lot in practice, uh, both in practice and in the hospital, is actually for TMJD assessment. And it's been very, very helpful because it allows me to gather all so we can follow up the patient more accurately and make referrals to the subspecialty TMJD departments uh, as required. Another thing I really like about Kuroku is the patient report, which you can send out after you've done the notes. This is super helpful and I'm sure this will improve the quality of care and the information delivered to the patient and it will really help them make an informed decision as to their treatment. I didn't find out about this until later on in my trial, so I was a little bit disappointed, but I've been trying to use it uh, as much as I can. Again, I'll show you how that is used. And finally, I must discuss the customer service. It's been great. They email you, they even call you, they want to set up uh, meetings so that they can assist with your uh, use of Kuroku. So let's talk about some of the things I don't really like about Kuroku. Uh, one of them is really annoying, actually. It's when you're typing something away and you switch to another tab, let's say you switch to your radiography uh, or your radiographs on a different software. And when you go back to the tab, it goes, it starts at the beginning. So you have to click on the end of the line, which can be incredibly frustrating. So please, if you're watching this, uh, try and amend this. The other thing as well, if you accidentally delete a row, which is quite easy to do because the reset button and the X button are quite close to each other, you just find that you lose that row and that information and it's quite difficult to get back. Also, I feel that the main part of the consultation is the discussion points that you have with a patient. Now, everyone has their own style and their own phrases that they use and I feel that they could possibly ask you a few more questions in the build-up phase or at some point when you're using Kuroku uh, to see how you may phrase certain things or how you might want to discuss, let's say, root canal treatment, uh, just to make it a bit more personal and make it feel like it's you that's writing it. Also, it would be really good when you send out your reports to the patient if the images or the information is a bit more bespoke to the patient. For example, if you've already discussed that you're going to do an acrylic denture on, let's say, the anterior teeth, technically it uses AI, so it should be able to generate some kind of images if they've got a bank of images that they can use of an anterior denture, for example, uh, I feel that that could be quite beneficial for the patients. Another thing is that sometimes when you're doing your diagnosis, say that uh, a lower right five tooth has got a broken filling and it's got uh, apical pathology, uh, so essentially it just needs root canal treatment, uh, let's say. Sometimes it double diagnoses on the end and the fact that you've got a broken tooth and then you discuss your options about that broken tooth, they don't necessarily match up to what you're trying to do at the end, if that makes sense. So now I'm going to go through a consultation here on my laptop and uh, I'll just give you an example, a demonstration of how it works. Okay, so you can see here, uh, this is the homepage. Uh, I've done 165 appointments. Apparently I've saved 20 hours, which is a lot, a long time. Now I remember quite clearly back in dental school uh, many years ago now, uh, when I was doing my dental notes, I really did think to myself, wow, I wish we could have something where you could just sort of click away or literally touch away 
And this is my AI score. I don't necessarily know what that means, but over here you'll see that the more you use it, you'll get some suggestions uh, with your templates. And let's see how this works. Okay, so let's do an emergency appointment here. So you'll see that it will have your name. It will have the nurse that uh, you work with. You can set up different nurses here if you work with quite a few different nurses. And uh, you can discuss here what the patient's main complaint is. Again, to be honest, your nurse will be doing this as you're having a discussion with the patient. So we'll say that the patient has pain uh, and they've got a broken tooth. Uh, we'll say that the tooth is the lower right six, which is broken. Uh, and we'll say that it's happened over the last three days. The pain, they're getting a bit of a th aching, throbbing pain, which is occasional. And it's localized to the area. We'll say that it's triggered by hot and biting. I think you'll be able to tell what the possible diagnosis is already. Uh, relieving factors, we'll take some pain medication to help with that. Severity, it can be, let's say, a seven out of 10. Uh, again, the broken tooth is here on the lower right six. How did it happen? Biting on some sticky foods and it's painful. Okay, we'll say the patient is a daily smoker. They're smoking, let's say, five cigarettes a day and they drink less than 14 units of alcohol per week. Medically, medical history we've checked. Uh, we've seen the software on Dentally, for example, and they are allergic to penicillin. Uh, there's no re relevant medication and no relevant conditions. So we've done our extra oral exam. There's no extra oral anomalies detected. We've had a look at the soft tissues. We could say there's dra draining sinus, but for now we'll just say there's nothing. Uh, caries, we'll say that there's caries on the lower right six and uh, it had a previous restoration that's sort of failed so we'll say that's a leaking or defective restoration special test we've done endofrost and ttp the endofrost is negative and it's negative response on the lower right six and the control test so we've got control on the five four and seven and they have come back as normal ttp it's positive on the lower right six and we'll do control tests. Uh, actually, let's go back. So it should be, so this is what I mean, the, this is quite close to, to each other, so it's very easy to delete this row and it'll get dif it's difficult to get back. So we've got negative TTP on the seven, five, and four. Okay, next, uh, we'll take a PA. Uh, it's, we've taken one, because we're quite good at taking radiographs. We have been on uh, we listen to Mr. Eric Waits when it comes to taking radiographs. They're always grade A. So we've taken the lower right six and five. Uh, it's grade acceptable. There's caries on the lower right six. Uh, Periapical radiolucency associated, uh, associated on the lower right six. Bone loss, uh, we'll say 10%. Other findings, um, you can say unusual root anatomy there. And we've showed our radiograph to the patient. Okay, so the diagnosis now, of course, you could select it from this choice. We'll say that the patient has sympt uh, symptomatic apical periodontitis with a broken tooth, essentially. We'll select that. Um, of course, it's a lower right six, and the broken tooth is the same, and carries on lower right six. So, yeah, uh, it's all, I wonder if they could maybe group this together uh, to make it easier. And uh, the, again here, periapical radiolucency indicative of symptomatic apical periodontitis. So sometimes it does repeat itself. I, if there was a, I reckon that that is something that could be improved to link them together. Okay, so we've had a discussion here. Now you'll see here, this, this is what I was alluding to earlier and the fact that when it comes to discussion points, I feel that that's where the consultation mainly is based around. So I normally have a lot to discuss when it comes to, uh, let's say, root canal treatment in, in this case. And I kind of wish that maybe more was here in the discussion points. That's not to say that this isn't good. You can see here that we've, we would be advised to give the patient smoking cessation advice and the risk that it carries. Uh, and of course, we've told them that they've got a de defective restoration. You can see here that the automatic uh, line that is put in is advised due to the restoration seal risk of decay present if not replace. See, that isn't necessarily true to a patient like this that already has the root uh, pathology. So really you would have to delete that line. So I would probably uh, remove that. So on the treatment options, we will discuss, uh, we can either do a pulp excavation and extraction. Uh, they're the sort of main two things that we can do. The other thing of course is not to do anything. 
which is not great. And let's say the patient's gone for uh, pulp extirpation uh, today. And you can go to the type of treatment that you've done. So let's say you've given a, a block on the right hand side, you've used lidocaine, uh, you've used one cartridge of 2.2 mils, uh, and that's on the lower right six. Um, you've done single tooth isolation because you should be doing isolation even when extirpating. Uh, you've used a high speed diamond, a rose head, maybe even use a Gates Glidden and a safe ended burr. Wow, you've used all of them. You've found the certain canals, you found the, and we've instrumented using a size 10 file, K files. Again, we've used it, so we've used sodium hypochlorite. Again, ideally we should be using that. And we've temporized using PTFE tape. Uh, let's say we've used some leather mix, PTFE and Cavit. Cotton wool pledge, I'm not the biggest fan of. I'm not sure if any of you had had some difficulty. Sometimes it can be a real nightmare to remove. So yeah, let's keep away from that. Let's use PTFE instead. It's a lot easier. And the occlusion checked, no adjustment needed because we've been very uh, systematic in how we've done our temporary restoration. Uh, that's not always the case as we know. Then we've given them post-op instructions. If you scroll down to the bottom now, you'll see all your notes are here. Very well organized and very clear, you'll see. It's all automatically done. Again, I know that may have taken a few minutes of me talking through this, but your nurse will be doing this as you're discussing with the patient or as you're wrapping up. So it makes things very easy. Uh, and to be honest, I have noticed that I've saved a lot of time uh, using Kuroku. And then what you'll do is you'll just copy these notes and you can just copy it to your uh, own particular programs. For example, I'll just normally switch tab here to go to Dentally, or if you're using SOE or whatever software you're using, you can just easily paste that in there. Sometimes you'll get this uh, error button if you haven't um, click something. So you here you'll see that uh, bite wings. I have not, uh, you know, I haven't ticked something here. You can either just get rid of it, or you can just say it's not indicated today. Uh, so finally, the other thing I wanted to discuss is the Pro Tools. So there's two different plans on Kuroku. You've got the basic plan, which I think is around thirty pounds a month plus VAT if you're paying monthly, and the Pro version is a lot more expensive. I think it's around eighty nine pounds, or maybe even ninety nine pounds. Of double check that with you and but the pro version allows you to do patient reports and patient letters which is really beneficial this is what i was discussing earlier so uh, if you go to patient report here so here you can generate your report so we'll say we will generate the emergency appointment we'll add the treatment plan and we'll add the treatment today as well as the uh no, we'll add the treatment today, that's fine. Then we will go to the diagnosis and we'll say that the caries is into the pulp. And we'll select the tooth that it is involved. Uh, we won't include, we'll include the mouth cancer screening. Uh, we will go down and we will select the extraction and RCT options, uh, as well as the options if they wanted uh, an implant and let's say they wanted a bridge. So let's say they wanted a conventional bridge and an implant uh, discuss. So you go to generate a report and there you have it. So this is a report that you can send to the patient. So you, it includes a little bit about their history, the treatment plan that was discussed and the treatment that you've done today. Uh, if you go here to the follow-up information, so it just discusses how the decay has gone into the pulp and the different stages of that and why they're experiencing the pain. It talks a little bit about implants and mouth cancer screening, and it talks about root canal treatment as well. A lot of information. Uh, and of course, the option uh, for extraction and bridges here. So again, this is a lot of information that you can just quickly now send to the patient uh, you can either download the PDF or send it yourself, or you can email the link to the patient with a password uh, that could be sent. So this just really improves, like I said, the patient communication and allowing patients to make a real decision or an informed decision for themselves. And I feel like it just takes you to the next level when it comes to clinical practice. And it just also gives you a leg to stand on uh, or more backing if anything does go wrong with certain patients. You could say, hey, look, I've sent you everything on the day of the procedure, and it does help you if things do go south with the patient, let's say. Of course, we don't like to practice defensive dentistry, but this really just helps 
like I said, improve patient communication. Okay, so that's a summary of Kuroku. What's my overall verdict? Is it something that you should avoid, something you should consider, or something that you should just have as part of your clinical practice? I personally feel that if you're somebody who is doing dentistry four or five days a week, uh, or even three days a week, I still feel the basic version of this is definitely worth it. It saves you a considerable amount of time. You'll find that you have more time uh, in between patients to do other things, and it just makes the overall workflow a lot more slick, uh, particularly when you've got a busy day of, let's say you've got loads of exams. This definitely relieves me of a lot of stress, so I do recommend it in that sense. Like I said, this video is unsponsored. Uh, it's completely my own choice. I've base my opinion of the trial that I had at a two months a trial from a referral from a friend. So I'd advise if you have a friend that has Kuroku, just ask them. They will be able to give you a, a referral code and that may give you a longer period of time to check it out. It's completely free. If you don't have a referral code, there's one in the description below that I've asked Kuroku if they can give me. It's not linked to my own personal account, so I don't get anything from it. Uh, I specifically asked for that because, like I said, this channel is based on giving completely unbiased reviews. So feel free to check it out. You'll get 14 days free. If you do decide to have a plan in the future, you'll get 10% off. So I feel like Kuroku are definitely onto something. There's a lot of potential in this. They can definitely grow and expand and sell to bigger corporations, for example, uh, Bupa, or even within the NHS. I've been using this in the maxillofacial department on certain clinics, like I said, with TMJD. Uh, I'm sure there's loads of different departments in the hospital that use templates uh, to gather information, let's say trauma, orthopedics, you know, uh, orthoptics, orthodontics. There's so many different departments that have templates. So I'm sure they could probably get some contracts or sell to them uh, but they've got a lot of potential but yeah overall definitely recommend it and i hope this video was beneficial of course if it was i'd really appreciate if you give the video a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel and uh, i will see you guys in the next one peace